Jackson Heights residents have much to look forward in seeing traffic safety improvements along Astoria Boulevard between 77th and 92nd Streets in the Borough of Queens following a recent meeting with local elected officials and DOT representatives. On December 2nd, Council Member Costa Costantinidis from Astoria hosted a workshop along with other local officials and DOT representatives during which community members discussed ways to improve traffic safety along this length of Astoria Boulevard. The interactive forum served as an opportunity for the community to become involved and provide input to the process decision for a comprehensive traffic safety plan that would make uh, this corridor safer. Councilmember Costantinidis, who recently held a similar successful workshop to discuss traffic safety along the streets of Astoria Park, in his opening remarks stressed that Astoria Boulevard has been notorious for crashes that have caused numerous injuries as well as fatalities in recent years and pledged his full support to the community during the process of designing and implementing the much-needed traffic safety measures between 77th and 92nd streets on Astoria. Boulevard. The council member also stressed that the efforts of making streets safer citywide falls under Mayor de Blasio's Vision Zero initiative. There were also remarks from Assemblymember Jeffrey and Aubrey, who also spoke about the imminent need to make Astoria Boulevard safer both for pedestrians and traffic with the implementation of necessary safety measures. A study which was conducted by the Department of Transportation was shared through slides identifying several areas which need safety improvement. Following the slide presentation, attendees broke into groups and discussed with DOT representatives, the problem areas and intersections where they want to see safety improvements made and also gave their own suggestions. Following the group discussion, uh, Department of Transportation representatives promised to look into the concerns and suggestions made by the attendees in preparing their work plan, noting, however, that at this time they could not offer a specific time frame as to when the work will begin or how long the project will take. We spoke further on the matter with DOT representative Tara Ishii. Uh, Ms. Ishii, you're from the uh, Department of Transportation, um, so uh, what is your role in this whole planning? I'm the director of the, the Pedestrian Projects Group and we focus on intersections throughout the city that are complicated and have high crash numbers where we want to bring um, more accessibility for pedestrians on busy streets, places that are dangerous, places that, where the communities feel that they don't have easy access to get where they need to in their communities. So we are here to gather information and take it back and really put together a plan to help the community use their street. And how long does this process uh, take usually? Well, fortunately, we're able to use some tools that can be um, that can we can go through the process very quickly, and we can usually get a project from um, design to implementation within a year or two, depending on whether a a um, intersection can be done in house, meaning with our own crews versus having a capital project. And certain things are too complicated to do in-house and we do have to do comp capital um, projects there. So in those cases, we do have to look for money, uh, funding, and um, do a bigger project. But the uh, important uh, fact is that you're here and you're listening and you're willing uh, to um, uh, come up with a plan to help the community. Absolutely. This, this, um, the street, Astoria Boulevard in this neighborhood, has really caught our attention. Um, it really looks like a freeway when you're, when you're here and, and we just don't want that for the community. So we're here, we, we have seen some of the horrifying crashes that have happened here and we just really want to help and, and make this a better place to live. Well, thank you very much and happy holidays. All right, thank you. Well, this evening we're having a interface between the Department of Transportation and the community around traffic issues on Astoria Boulevard from 92nd to 72nd, uh, 77th, I believe. And uh, this is a strip that has a lot of unusual crossings, both for pedestrians and um,
cars and has had a number of fatalities, both automotive and pedestrian fatalities over the years. Astoria Boulevard is one of those access roads for the Grand Central. A lot of people who go into Manhattan use it in the morning from 7 to 10 and use it in the evening from 4 to 7 to come out. And so we get an extraordinary amount of, of traffic. Plus, we're right adjacent to LaGuardia Airport. So you get all of the airport traffic. You get, say, stadium traffic. You get uh, USTA traffic. So we have cars all over the place. Plus, on the backside of this of Astoria Boulevard, you have multiple uh, car rental yes. shops and a DOT bus terminal. So we get a lot of traffic that uses Astoria as the main use, uh, venue through this neighborhoods. But we're also a residential, low district residential community. And so our residents need to be able to go back and forth across Astoria safely. There are businesses on both sides that we use. And um, for years, I've lived on and around Astoria Boulevard almost my entire life. Uh, and so for years, we've complained about this mass traffic problem. This is one of the first times that we've had an administration come out and have this discussion with the community, and it's happening all up Astoria Boulevard from 77th all the way to 114th Street, and they're having that conversation in segments so that the residents and the various sides can um, uh, give them their ideas and try and get some solutions that make the street more livable. And some of those solutions, uh, hearing from uh, the residents uh, this evening, is mainly um, making the lights uh, for the pedestrians longer, uh, maybe uh, reduce the speed limit. Are those the uh, main concerns? I think that's true. There are also these safety crosswalks that the Department of Transportation uses, for instance, on Northern Boulevard, where instead of just walking between white lines, you have the the median of Astoria Boulevard extended so that if you don't make it across, you have a safe place to stand and you're not just standing in the street. So, and that makes sense. And I think we're also looking at places where you might create crosswalks that don't exist now. And there's some very long strips, particularly on this end, that are, uh, that are done. And this is also important because Astoria Boulevard has been rezoned with the prospect of creating more housing. So if it becomes more residential than it is now, then more reason to have a protection for both pedestrians and automotive users. Well, we wish you the very best. Good luck. And um, we should also uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. And to you and your audience, thank you for coming out on this wet but not cold night. And we, we appreciate you covering it and very well. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. you know, we're here tonight to talk about traffic safety in Astoria Boulevard. Uh, you know, from the stretch on 77th Street to 92nd Street, uh, it gets a little bit uh, hairy. Uh, you know, there, are some, there aren't a lot of crossings. Uh, cars are going. Uh, maybe some time to bypass the Grand Central Parkway. Maybe going to Long Island. Maybe going to City Field. Um, but they're sort of making this more into a highway, less like a street. And there's been a lot of concern from residents about that and wanting to see um, how they can get across the street safer. They don't have to jaywalk and that they can feel safe crossing um, in their community. So we're here tonight to figure that out. And you have representatives uh, from other city agencies, right? Yeah, the Department of Transportation is here to discuss this with us and to lay out the maps and hear the concerns of the residents. We have uh, my colleagues in government, Assemblyman Mike Dendecker and Assemblyman Aubrey, uh, who are here to uh, make sure that their voices are heard. And, uh, you know, we, are, we have the, the police is here as well. The 115th Precinct uh, is here of their traffic safety agents are here to talk about some of the things that they've seen and what they think and how they... Uh, uh, what their opinion is and what streets can be made better. So it's really about improving our community. And now I see everybody's looking at the maps, the residents, the concerned residents of the area here. Uh, once they um, make their recommendations, how long do you think it's going to take before some implementation takes place? I mean, I think we definitely want to, you know, we want to give these ideas to DOT, have D to DOT come back to us with a, with a good plan, and then take a look at that plan and evaluate it and make sure it meets the concerns that the community has. Uh, so it'll be brought back to the community board, brought back to the residents to make sure that this is something that we think makes sense, and then hopefully we'll have it implemented uh, soon after that. Anything else uh, you're working on? Uh, well, 
Well, we're, we're doing a, a bill on Monday uh, in relation to geothermal technology, which is really exciting, pulling energy from the Earth's crust to heat buildings and, and pushing it down into the Earth's crust to cool them. Uh, it's a clean energy source, uh, and for the first time in the history of New York City, uh, when evaluating whether or not we're going to use that technology, uh, the social cost of carbon, so the pollution will be taken into account. Uh, so it's a really exciting uh, uh, bill that we're going to that I'm the lead sponsor on that we're doing Monday uh, as chair of the Environmental Protection Committee. Uh, we know we have to do better when it comes to climate change and to health uh, benefits here in Astoria and Western Queens. So we're excited to see this bill finally move forward. Well, if I don't uh, see you, probably I will see you before uh, Christmas. I would like to wish you a very happy holiday season. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, you as well, and I hope you had everyone had a, a wonderful Thanksgiving and a blessed Thanksgiving. And I'm looking forward to be back before, but yeah. uh, if I don't see everyone, I, I wish you, and uh, you've been an amazing voice for the Greek community. So uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and looking forward to another great year with Actina. Thank you. Thank you, Elena.